Um, so I am Juliana. I am part of the Data Sketch team. We uh, maybe may, um, many of you uh, listen to my colleagues. So uh, I'm not going to to talk more about Data Sketch. We in general we construct uh, or build. Uh, tools for democratize uh, access to information and, and data science. So uh, today I'm going to talk about data and algorithms uh, and, and the general perception of data and algorithms uh, is that this will solve all of our problems. But this is not always true because uh, we have a lot of challenge uh, constructing uh, tools and build tools uh, and, and working with data. Uh, we, we have challenges collecting data, analyzing data, visualizing data, and especially making good decisions uh, with data because, well, collections, uh, the information is not always in the best formats or I don't have the, the best tools for visualizing the information. I don't know uh, what graph to use. So uh, in, this, in this concept of uh, using data, uh, there, is, there is a concept that we all know that is the big data, but also we should um, like um, analyze the, the concept of small data because, well, many of our stakeholders, uh, NGOs, uh, public institutions, governments, uh, among others, use small data and not the, the big data as we know in general. Uh, the problem of these kind of stakeholders is that, that they don't have uh, a skilled personnel and like technical skilled personnel all the time to process data. They don't have data scientists, programmers, among others. And there's uh, a, a lot of data sources in silos in uh, multiple places, uh, uh, in multiple systems. Uh, there is no accessible tools uh, for everyone. Um, that could be that uh, the tools are hard to, to work on. And the question here is, Will ever an AI or will ever data understand an indigenous community or a local city or a local community? And that's what we want um, to answer with uh, some projects that we have developed. And well, one of the questions here is what to do with data. And this is a question that many of our stakeholders ask to us. Because, well, there, there's a lot of um, uh, data sources uh, and people who collect the information of the data sources, but they don't know how to process the, the information and they don't know how to communicate the information. So I'm going to talk about three solutions uh, that we develop in Data Sketch. The first one is the local government in Mexico. Maybe you heard about that uh, before, but well, there is a, a video that explains uh, how we did the data portal in Mexico City. But in general, what we did was using Seacan, of course, and um, uh, develop an interface to uh, search for uh, data sources, but also um, visualize the information of these data sources in um, a dashboard. You can see that um, there uh, with visualizations, filters like dates, um, neighbors, among others. And the interesting uh, thing here is that it has a recommendation visualization um, engine. Well, uh, we use Seacan, uh, it's an open source software for open data portals, Canada, US, um, Uruguay use it. And um, we use some extensions uh, uh, of Seacan, but we have the, like, the challenge of make it beautiful and make it accessible and using, using like interfaces that the community and the citizenship uh, wants to use. 
So uh, we use the, the SCAN API to um, construct the dashboards, the interactive dashboards uh, use, uh, use. This is uh, an example. Uh, this is the geographic data visualization of the Mexico City uh, using data visualization recommendation engine. Well, what, what are the learnings of this process? One, the SECAN extensions, extensions are really important for, for using this um, building tools for data portals. Uh, curate ma data manually so it has good metadata. Uh, it means that uh, the Mexico City uh, 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 government has to uh, curate the data manually, like uh, uh, clean the data, structure the data, to uh, make the good metadata to uh, construct the, the recommendation uh, visualization engine. Open data portals should be uh, friendly, uh, user friendly, uh, and visualization should engage community because uh, what we wanted with this open data portal was that uh, citizens use the information that uh, Mexico has and visualize it in the best way possible and uh, uh, download it and use it as they want. Case two is the is a case of small newsrooms in Europe. Uh, the, we constructed a data management system for uh, El Confidencial, it's a, a media in Spain, and uh, Vox Europe, uh, a media in, based in Belgium, is a pan-European media. What was the challenges of, of this project? One uh, is that uh, the, the media in general doesn't have the, uh, the experience, the technical experience to access to information, to visualize the information, and has like data quality to use it and uh, communicate the information they want. Um, they have uh, challenges making simple visualizations. Always, all the journalists has time constraints. And, um, and they have, in general, a lack of reuse and collaborations with other newsrooms. Our solutions um, develop a data management system that uh, begins with data sources, with the spreadsheets, public data, um, data integration with uh, some interfaces that I'm going to show you next. And this works to improve the newsroom efficiency to uh, well, uh, well to to the these newsrooms. Uh, this is the uh, interface of of uh, of the um, tool that that we develop for the um, um, uploading of the information. This is like a. Um, I forgot the, the word. Uh, this is like a, a, um, a repository, a repository of the information of the data they, they collected. And with the repository, they uh, could visualize the information that they upload in the, in the um, repository. So uh, we have also an, uh, a tool for um, Automatic uh, for for recommend for the recommendation of visualizations. So uh, this tool was used by the newsrooms for uh, use data, visualize it, and then uh, we develop other 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 tool to uh, click a button, uh, embed the visualization, and um, publish it in the report of the newsroom. This is one example. And in the case three, uh, we develop a biodiversity research with local communities. So this uh, begins with Alexander von Humboldt, who, is, uh, he, who was a, a scientist, a biologist, that worked, on, uh, worked 
in Colombia, Venezuela, and Ecuador. And what he did was uh, collecting small data, like uh, as you see here, is like a spreadsheet, uh, but but uh, with his hands, and uh, he re record uh, species in these uh, different countries. So that's similar of what the indigenous communities in Colombia uh, does right now, because um, this is, a, this is a, a, an indigenous community in, in the south of Colombia, Agua. Um, they collect information and record the species in Colombia to, uh, to, to understand and to know the different uh, species that are around this region. We collect that information they, they have and match with the public, the, um, the biodiversity institution, the official biodiversity institution, and we made a, a workshop with the community to visualize the information and to try to understand the, the perspective of both uh, um, stakeholders that collect information. Uh, what um, result of that process is a project named Biodiversidad en Cifras, uh, and, uh, and it's a biodiversity information system with uh, visualizations, you can uh, uh, filter, uh, of, uh, uh, filter um, the departments, the uh, species, if you want to know the endangered species in the in the country, you could have it here. So uh, this is this is really important because data sharing uh, information here is uh, focused on how um, different type of people share information in a network. This is a network uh, of biodiversity around the world that is named uh, Darwin Core. And many people around the world, like uh, the AWA community, have uh, information that they want to share with, other, uh, with others around the world. And they construct a, a, a really nice network about biodiversity. So what we did in these three uh, cases, we construct, like, use the information, uh, talk with the stakeholders, use the, the data uh, that we needed, analyze it, and uh, construct inf interfaces. Could be a visualization, a dashboard, a chatbot, among others. And uh, this is what we do in the data sketch. We, we do a cloud-based data and dashboarding solution. And, and right now we are uh, developing AI, AI charts. That's uh, like a chatbot that uh, answers questions with uh, data visualizations. Maybe you already saw this uh, mini demo uh, that has, if you, if you put um, a questions about elections in United States, uh, like uh, what was, uh, who was the winner in uh, that uh, state, you could have the, que the answer of that question with a data visualization. So we want to empower small business to answer questions with their own data. If you want to, to check more, of course, here is my, my email and uh, the web page of Data Sketch. Thank you. Questions? Oye, las herramientas que ustedes este, realizan o, o diseñan son para expertos o esas aplicaciones este, llegan al al ciudadano que va de a pie. Um, uh, son, well, he, he's, uh, he's uh, asking if uh, our tools are developed by, uh, for like everyone, 
uh, and, and the, the answer, sí, sí, eh, en realidad nosotros, el, el objetivo de Datasketch es crear herramientas para que personas no técnicas y equipos no técnicos usen sus datos, los visualicen, los analicen, los guarden en sus repositorios y comuniquen la información de las como me, mejores maneras. Entonces, eh, pues, por eso como que uno de nuestros objetivos es eh, trabajar con comunidades locales también, en algunos proyectos lo hemos hecho, para recoger las necesidades eh, como de información que tienen para pues, comunicarles la información de la mejor manera posible. Y eso me lleva a preguntar lo siguiente, este, ya se abrieron los, los datos para el metro, por ejemplo. ¿Qué han hecho para la para asistir al usuario del metro para que tenga una mejor movilidad. En la actualidad, este, a través de la radio, este, se les da información al, a, a los que conducen y les van diciendo cómo va el tráfico, pero sería fenomenal tener para alguien que es usuario del metro cómo tomar rutas alternas cuando, cuando pues, es necesario. ¿no? Bueno, esa es, ese es una, una pregunta muy, muy importante porque pues en realidad la, la relación que nosotros tuvimos con el gobierno de México pues fue simplemente realizar la herramienta y pues el gobierno de México es quien pues tiene el deber de eh, impactar a la ciudadanía con esto, pero… Eh, como que una, una, uno de los temas que nosotros estamos trabajando es cómo hacer para que ciertas interfaces sean mucho más fácil, fáciles de usar. Por ejemplo, un chatbot de inteligencia artificial para un ciudadano que necesite saber cuándo pasa el metro que me sirve, si lo pregunta en un chat, pues debería responderle una, pregunta, una, una respuesta que sea real con los datos que, que ya tendríamos. Esto pues depende mucho de las interfaces, pero pues tendríamos que trabajar en eso. Eh. Hi, thanks. Um, I'm interested in how um, data sketch builds relationships over a long period of time, if they, if you guys do at all. Um, it kind of seems like a lot of the projects you guys take on are almost like flash in the pan. Um, do you guys offer solutions for maybe like a long-term project? And if so, like how do you negotiate um, how you work on things and who works on things and who gets access to how it's built? Thank you for that question. Um, the, for example, the, the uh, Mexican portal, is uh, constructed by, uh, based on, on, on the, the, the um, based on, on the actualization of the information, of the automatization of the information, because uh, we use the API, uh, the CCAN API, uh, that is the information that uh, well, the, the secretaries uh, upload in the CCAN, and we use the API of the to connect the information and to automatize, automatize the information. So, um, for example, the Humboldt uh, Biodiversity uh, Project uses also an API of the um, of the um, Darwin Core. That is uh, that is the the. the the institute um, in charge of um, um, actualizing the information, so uh, we could do that. We, in general, we uh, try to develop all the tools to um, improve the, the, like, have the the capability of uh, automatization of the information. I'm curious about the second example with the newspaper. Um, can you speak a little bit more about sort of what some of the motivations for that partner was? Were they looking for like your chart making expertise and simplicity or were they thinking about like better usability compared to other data tools or was it really centralized like st storage and maintenance of the data? What, what were they looking for from you all as the main 
reason to invest in a, in a tool like that? Mm, about this, this second project, they wanted to, um, they want a tool, they wanted a tool that makes, that where they could make good visualizations, like simple visualizations, because in, in general newsrooms doesn't need like a big uh, visualization that, that doesn't allow citizenship to understand the, the information. They wanted uh, like a simple chart uh, tool and a tool that could be uh, uh, interoperable with the different steps that uh, the, the newsrooms has. For example, they wanted to, this is important, uh, I forgot to say this, <laughs> but uh, they wanted to uh, connect information from the OCDE and Eurostats, for example, and Eurostats and OCDE has uh, APIs. So we, what we did was uh, connecting the, 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 these different portals to the newsrooms and uh, make a repository for them uh, to visualize the information in, in, in like in, in just seconds and embed that in, in the reports in their C CMS. I think this is going to be our last question, then we'll end. Uh, first of all, thank you. Uh, that was really interesting to listen about. And it was very impressive how you talked about the three different use cases. Those are three very different kinds of organizations to work with. I'm curious if there's anything that was surprising for you when you worked with those three different kinds of projects. One of the most interesting things and challenging things is for us to work with local communities, especially with local communities, because local communities in general has uh, a different perception of what of um, what we thought about data, and we and what institutions, social media in general, well. Uh, they, they have a, like uh, a different perspective of the world and it's really interesting because they have needs that are uh, that we could contribute to, to to give them but are needs that we can't uh, give them with all our tools for example they in in the our community they don't have computers so they have to um, but they have uh, they have uh, cell phones so we had to implement uh, like tools for that kind of communities and this is that that is super interesting for example we are right now um, implementing a, a, a project uh, of um, mining in Colombia. So well, mining is a really tough issue uh, in many countries, but people are really interested in knowing about the information and are really interested in using their cell phone to have information and, uh, and, and, and use it for accountability, use it for um, uh, social I don't know how to say that in social social so, <laughs> like social theory um, yeah so for me that's that's one of the the most challenging things and most like beautiful things of our work right now Thank you.